Steve Portanga, Director of Sports Psychology. Hi Steve, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions today. Um, what is the most rewarding part of being the Director of Sports Psychology here at DU? It's helping people through the process of challenging themselves and trying to figure out um, what they want to get out of life and trying to figure out how to get there in life. And so seeing people as they struggle through the challenges, the ups and downs in that process, and seeing the uh, smiles that come when they actually do get some success and see things coming around, it's uh, pretty cool to know that you're a part of that. Okay. And how specifically do you work with coaches to develop a positive team environment? It's a very long, ongoing process. You know, it starts by getting them to figure out exactly what they want the team environment to look like, the kind of core values that they want to be a part of the team, and then breaking it down from there to figure out what are the behaviors that really exemplify uh, those values, and really being deliberate in trying to teach to that. You know, to have things that are happening on and off the field that really reinforce and highlight those values on a consistent basis. And so just like a lot of coaches have a lot of very specific plans for developing um, strategical understanding or sports skills, trying to come up with a very similar plan for purposefully developing a very specific environment. Right. And how do you think helping these athletes with their athletic success helps lead to excellence in the classroom and in their outside lives? There's just a lot of things in life that we do that are performance, you know, where we prepare and plan for uh, specific events. You know, and then have a set idea of what we want to do or how we want that event to go. And so at the end of the day, it's a lot of fun to perform well in sport, but it's really more important to learn how to persevere, how to come up with a plan, how to uh, modify and adapt that plan, be resilient, show grit in that process, and really being able to um, put that plan into action in the moment when it really counts. You know, whether it's a test, an interview, a big sales pitch, proposal, something along those lines. You know, it's um, great to have a sense of how you want that to go, but to be able to have the composure and uh, have done the practice to be able to pull it off ends up being really most important. And are there one or two specific teams that you work with more closely as opposed to others, or do you see most of the athletes on a regular basis and do you interact or work more individually with athletes, or is it mostly the whole team? Yes. It's uh, all of the above. I think each team is a little bit different in terms of the way I'm integrated with the team. Some teams a little bit more with the coaches, some teams a little bit more with the team as a whole, some teams uh, probably more with just the athletes individually. And it's uh, part of what makes the job really fun is that each team is really different in how we do it. I think there are some teams, some sports, where the uh, performance piece is a little bit um, easier to kind of work with them on an individual basis. You know, a lot of the individual sports, close sports, where there's a lot of uh, perhaps a motor learning, motor performance uh, component to it, you know, there's certain things that become um, a little bit more important because that level of precision is uh, higher in terms of being able to perform well. Gymnastics is one. It's kind of easy on one hand because you know exactly what you're going to do before you go there, but the requirements as a result of that are really high in terms of the level of precision. You know, other sports, soccer, you just kind of have to get that pass somewhere in the vicinity of that person, and you don't have to have the um, precision that you have in gymnastics. And so preparing for those are a little bit different, and that's where some of the, um, the mental side of it, you know, um, probably needs a little bit more work and needs to be fine-tuned a little bit more than other sports. And what types of challenges do you face on a daily basis while working with these athletes? A large part of it is probably consistency, you know, really trying to get connected to athletes regularly enough to be able to teach, get them enough to practice things. A lot of what we're talking about, um, just like any kind of skill, requires repetition. And when you're talking about um, athletes that are traveling for competition, the amount of time that goes into physical practice, strength and conditioning, um, going to class, studying, sometimes tutors, maybe getting involved in extracurricular activities and supposedly, you know, having a social life somewhere in there, you know, it can be hard to just um, either get connected individually or have them get the repetition on their own to really put this stuff into place the way that we want. You know, another big challenge is just having people really fully understand. Um, we're talking about psychology of performance and not psychology of personality. And so when a lot of people hear psychology, they think there's a lot of stigma. They're going to lay down on the coach, talk about their parents, and all sorts of stuff like that. Or, I'm an athlete, I'm tough, I should be able to do it on my own. 
which is idiotic because they have coaches their whole lives who help them do things and they haven't done anything on their own, but you know, all sorts of things like that. So really the managing some of the misperceptions to be able to sit down and do the work. Okay. And has working with college athletes changed or enhanced your perception of NCAA athletics? Uh, as an employee of an NCAA institution, uh, probably should say that it's enhanced. Uh, it's just made me more aware of the challenges that the NCAA has, that there's a lot of um, people out there that are deliberately looking to circumvent the rules, deliberately trying to do things that are perhaps not in the athlete's best interest, and it's um, a crazy challenge for them to try and manage this and have things work in athletes' uh, best interest. And sometimes they get it right, and sometimes they do things that have good intent and just don't really execute it the way that it probably should. And so I think that awareness of all of the challenges um, it's given me a little bit more patience for some of the things that do not make sense. And more encouragement to try and get into the NCAA somewhere or another and help uh, change some of that. Okay. And what inspired or motivated you to choose this profession? I got into it from being a ski coach. Um, realized that when I had an athlete that was paying attention and motivated and listening, it was really pretty easy to teach him how to do, uh, ski better. You know, the technical stuff, um, you know, understood very well. It was just the, all of the stuff that it took to get things in place to be able to actually teach the sports skill that I struggled with initially. And as I thought about being a coach for a profession, decided I needed to go back and get a master's to do that. And then uh, once I got into it, just fell in love with it, realized it was a, a fun part to work with, a big challenge, and there was definitely a large part of me that wanted to be able to work with skiers and not stand at the bottom of the hill in hard plastic boots, um, freezing my toes. And so it's kind of provided me an opportunity to finally do that. And what are your future goals here at DU as the director? To continue to uh, innovate, you know, see what comes up in terms of the science, the psychology performance, um, try and be a lot more proactive in developing leaders and teams, um, looking more into doing stuff with technology, whether it's biofeedback, neurofeedback, really trying to understand what's going on up in here and uh, see what we can do with that. Okay, great. Thank you.